support is to give assistance that enables someone in some way. Humans, as a species, are actually expert in support. It's a big reason why we've even survived and evolved to the point that we have today. But humans are also not immune to dysfunction when it comes to support. When we are young, many of us have adults around us who cannot see us as individuals. Instead, they see us as extensions of themselves. We are treated as if we exist to satiate the needs of these adults. We are trained that there is only one right way to support, and that is whatever support these adults needed most. Oftentimes, the forms of support that we are intrinsically built for are either not recognized and valued, or are outright discouraged. For example, let's say that a child is born with the innate talent of aesthetics. This is a child who could easily rearrange the household to create a beautiful living environment for the family. But this particular talent or form of support is not valued, because let's say that this house belongs to a single mother, a mother with multiple children. What this mother needs is for this child to support the younger siblings. Caretaking is something that this child hates to do. This support is given begrudgingly so as to avoid consequences. This child will begin to feel used and as if they have to give up part of themselves. If this experience is associated with the idea of support, they will hate the idea of being in a supportive role. Dysfunctional relationships are essentially relationships where the needs of either party are met in ways that are detrimental to one or both parties within the relationship. Basically, a dysfunctional relationship can be summed up in the following way. I can't have me and have you too. In a dysfunctional relationship, people can't figure out how to be in relationships and keep their own feelings, their own thoughts, their own needs, their own desires, their own preferences. So what classically happens is that one person in the relationship just stops giving a crap about the other person and only has the best interests in mind. They only think about their own thoughts, their own feelings, their own needs, their own preferences. And the other party completely abandons their own preferences, their own thoughts, their own needs, their own desires for the other person's. The other person abandons many of their desires, their needs, their thoughts, their own feelings, their own authenticity. But here's the thing. Both parties in the relationship are completely 100% narcissistic. Why? Because even the person who gives themselves up for the other person is doing so in order to get their needs met. So both people are only concerned with themselves. It's this role within the relationship that's the most important to understand because the relationship becomes the following. I'll meet your needs in these ways that are detrimental to me and that I don't want to so that I can get fill in the blank. It is negatively transactional in nature, not a healthy exchange. Just to name a few examples, X may be praise, X might be guarantee of never being left, X might be an opportunity they want. This person actually only supports the other in order to get their own needs met, which is manipulative. So neither person is in an actual real relationship. They're simply focused on getting their own needs met. This style of relationship is so common to the human race that in fact it is the norm. But it has done something to us. It has embedded us with the idea that support innately means to give yourself up in some way. And because of this, nobody wants to obviously give up their thoughts, their desires, their feelings, their preferences, their needs. So we equate loving somebody or being in a relationship or supporting someone with self-sacrifice. Now what we have is a love-hate relationship of support. On the one hand, we don't want to be in that role because we don't want to give ourselves up. On the other hand, so far it's been kind of equated to morality for us to be in that role where we give ourselves up for somebody else. And we want more than anything to be good. We want to be good or feel like we're good people and be seen as good so badly that we are tempted to pay that price. But if we do go ahead and pay that price, there are major consequences. We never feel good about it. We become resentful. We feel bad towards whatever we're giving ourselves up in order to give our assistance to. Those of you who had moms that self-sacrificed in any way to be moms know exactly how well this turned out. Now, some moms could give their life completely over to the dedication to a child's life and well-being, and that would be perfectly in alignment for them. In fact, they wouldn't be giving themselves up in any way to do so. Another mother, that would be completely giving herself up to focus on her children in that way. 
the relationship that we have to support has got to change, and it has to change today. The thing that most people don't know is that we are all born with the intrinsic capacity to support each other. Not only the intrinsic capacity, but also the intense intrinsic drive to support each other. The variable is about how. We are trained to think of support in an incredibly limited way. We are trained to think of support only in terms of how our parents valued assistance. We are also trained by society at large that support is only about acts of service. I want you to stop this video right now and I want you to get out a piece of paper. At the top of that paper I want you to write the word support. And then under that I want you to make a list of all the things that you associate with that word. Some examples of things that could end up on the paper might be the image of someone cheering from the stands at a football game, drudgery, the feeling of doing things you don't want to do, the memory of rubbing someone's feet, taking care of someone who's sick, exhaustion, the awesome feeling of being needed, etc., etc. Allow yourself to make a list that is completely unique to you and be completely brutally honest. Some of us have a better relationship with support, and so we'll see predominantly positive things, but the majority of people have a negative association with support. And so they will predominantly have a list of negative things. The majority of us want support, but we don't actually want to support other people because of this association we have with support and giving ourselves up. When you're done with this list, turn this video back on. Think about this. To support someone is to give assistance that enables someone in some way. Do you know how many types of support there are? What you have to find is the ways that you like doing that. You need to find the ways that doing that feels not like you're giving yourself up, but like you are so happy doing it that the doing of it seems to fill you up somehow or meet your needs. The happiest types of relationships are relationships between people who have a compatibility between the type of support they love giving and intrinsically naturally give and the support that is needed on the other end. The most miserable types of relationships is where there is incompatibility in terms of the type of support that someone needs and the type that their partner or the other person intrinsically gives. The first is a win-win scenario. The second is a win-lose scenario. But what do we know about relationships? Anytime we're in a win-lose scenario in a relationship, it negates the relationship. And so it really becomes a lose-lose. It is critical to look for compatibility in terms of the type of support that you need and the other person in the relationship gives and vice versa. It's really important to know that you can't force another person to value your intrinsic type of support any more than you can force yourself to not need some type of support that you need. You can't force someone to value the type of intrinsic support that you give any more than you can force yourself to love giving a type of support that you don't like giving. I'll give you an example. My favorite form of support is to give my creative achievements to other people. The most obvious way that this is manifesting is that I give my creative achievements to people in the form of these videos every week and people use them to transform their lives. I could do this form of support forever. It doesn't really feel like support. I'm not giving anything away. I love doing this. And it's obvious that people all over the world absolutely love this form of support. However, there are some people that want a different type of support from me. What they're missing out on is the feeling of being nurtured by their mothers. And so they show up at my events and they show up at my workshops all the time, wanting that type of nurturing mother type behavior from me. This is a little bit like looking to a surgeon to be a nurse. Obviously, they're going to be grossly disappointed, because that's not a form of support I enjoy giving, and I don't give it. When I don't give it, they're disappointed and even really mad about it. Just to make this make more sense, some other forms of support that are completely intrinsic to me and that are in no way giving myself away in order to support people are the following. Cooking for people, giving gifts, making people laugh, giving intense levels of intimacy, spending quality time with people where I'm completely present, giving people new experiences and even financially paying for them to have those experiences, creating art that enriches people's lives, creating beauty and energetic balance in people's living environments, helping people to become completely aware, assisting people's physical health, especially by making things that add to their health like teas and tinctures. I also love leading and I love initiating. To understand the flip side, let's take a look at some forms of support that do not come intrinsic to me and more than that that I dislike. Physical nurturing and caretaking, affirming others, organizing and planning, dedicating myself on an ongoing basis to another person's success in the way that a manager or agent or housewife or coach or stay-at-home mom would. 
acts of service like doing someone's laundry or helping them move. Now, if you take a close look at the support that I myself need, it's the exact support that I don't like giving. <laughs> To find compatibility in my relationships, I have to find somebody whose intrinsic drive is in the direction of those forms of support that I myself don't like giving, and somebody who what they need is my intrinsic forms of support. Remember that just because you hate giving support in some way doesn't mean there won't be somebody who's super psyched to give it in that way. In other words, just because your mother told you every day, I'm not your slave, doesn't mean someone won't love to make you dinner. <laughs> Discover the ways that you intrinsically give support and discover what ways you need support. Then seek out the people who would need value and love the ways that you intrinsically support others and seek out the people who intrinsically need and love and value supporting you in the way you need to be supported. Have a good day.